Yo, what up everyone? It's Tyranitar YouTube and welcome back. What are we welcoming back to? Welcome to a Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee update. My dudes, the dra the dra what is the trailer just dropped on May 29. This is gonna be a breakdown of the trailer. We're gonna look at all the details. We're gonna see what you guys tweeted to me. There's so many things to talk about. How long is this video gonna be? Look, yesterday I posted an update, which was the trailer, the reveal trailer for this. We're gonna go through the trailer and break it down. Give it to me. Speculate on the way with me. Let me know in the comments below anything you noticed. We're gonna try to notice everything here. Alright, so it starts off, they're on go, because it freaking incorporates the two. And you freaking see that as the trailer goes on. So he's freaking getting his mileage going on. He's got his bike. Simulated effects. Oh no, that Pikachu real. Oh my goodness, guys. This right here. First of all, the graphics. Game footage in this video is not final. But it was the graphics. There's two sides to the graphics here. This is more like X and Y styled chibi graphics versus the sun and moon's stretched out coliseum like graphics. There's something so interesting about these graphics, which is that it takes you back to how sprites used to be. You used to be an avatar. A lot of people actually really liked the chibi look that X and Y had because it was a lot like Pokemon games before. It was just a little icon. When Sun and Moon came out, it was half and half. People really liked that the graphics were updated. But there's something about having a chibi avatar that really feels like Pokemon. This is crazy right here. A new Pokemon game. So, look at this. You get to pick Pikachu and Eevee. And as you can see, the big version difference between Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is that the mascot travels with you for the entire game. You'll see later on that Pokemon follow you. But these guys, like Pikachu, will sit on your shoulder for the entire game. And Eevee will sit on your head for the entire game. You can tell them to do whatever they want. And you can also customize them, which they'll show later. So, she's walking around. This is what, Vermilion City? There's no way. It's so crazy freaking professor oak so you got the pidgey scattering so this is probably where you're about to get attacked by pokemon oak comes drags you back to his lab look at this you guys have to admit there's something so crazy about seeing oak in a little avatar form not a full-grown oak it captures such a nostalgic pokemon feel like if it was tall graphics it wouldn't feel as nostalgic i don't know if you guys can see that so he gives you your starter which seems to be forced pikachu which is setting on you a trophy and you get a Pokeball. So here, Pikachu sitting on your shoulder here. Yeah, hey. All right. How you play the game. So you can, of course, put it and use it as a handheld. Which, another thing you guys might not know is Nintendo might start selling handheld versions of the Switch. Which some sites said is like 50 to 100 bucks cheaper. Except that it doesn't come with the dock. So you just literally use it as a handheld version. But for people who want to play on the TV, all you need is one Nah, he's using just one. What the crap? I mean, I guess you got all the buttons you need. Because he runs by default. Maybe he's holding the R2 button on the back. This is the big thing, guys. There's no more encountering random Pokemon in the wild. Like, there is, but you don't just run around in the grass and then a Sudowoodo pops up. You see a Pokemon there, just like in Pokemon Go, I guess. And you, you go there, which is crazy because... What happens when you're looking for a rare Pokemon like Bagon, for example? Or, or let's say you're in the Safari Zone. What would it take to find like a Dratini in the water there? That's like a really rare encounter. You can see there's a Weedle, a Rattata, and a Pidgey in the grass here. And when they go into the encounter, it's freaking Pokemon Go! So here it says, get ready, items help run away. What the hell is get ready? Get ready is just to begin capturing the Pokemon. It's exactly like Pokemon Go, which is crazy. It'll take some time to get used to that. And I said this in the previous videos. It's like if you have 99 balls, you can catch any Pokemon. This way, I don't know what they're trying to do. Maybe Pokemon run away after like three catch attempts. But here's one thing that a lot of people actually completely missed. Is that this game right here is going to be in one of two branches for Pokemon. A traditional branch and the main core series branch. They're going to go back to the original formula for the game after this. They actually confirmed it. And I'll talk about that a bit later. This is just a traditional branch, which is still a main series RPG Pokemon game, but it's in its own branch. That's why it has chibi graphics. They would go back to the long, stretched out, and high quality graphics for that other game. I'll talk about that later. But that wouldn't have a Pokemon Go capturing system. This is just for this traditional uh, branch, which is crazy. Look at this crab. A freaking manky nice. And I mean, you really do throw it like that. I, I mean, what the hell, dude? Is there... What if I'm, like, facing to the side? Okay, pay attention. I think with the capture, it always throws straight. You just gotta determine the strength 
and whether the circle is where you want it to be when you throw it. This will get some taken used to, but remember guys, it's not going to be forever. It's just for this game. Next up, y'all, the friend section. Share with friends. You can call your freaking sister over, give her the other Joy-Con, and she joins you right beside you. And if you guys remember, you play with just one Joy-Con. It has four buttons and a freaking joystick. That's all you need. You can get your friend or sibling to come, and he actually joins as the second player. Because you as the main player have the Eevee, but you don't. So it's freaking local multiplayer. I don't know how far that goes, but how much are they trying to let us do on one screen? Now, when it comes to multiplayer, apparently some of the information that's been going around is that there's no online Wi-Fi capability. And that's, again, because this is its own branch. It's not meant to, you know, become the new VGC thing and compete in tournaments. This is just a game for us all to enjoy in literally like four months. This is coming out in November of 2018, if you guys don't know. It's coming out this year, which is crazy. People are so sure that they had to wait till 2019 for a game, and this is actually waiting for us. So these guys are walking together, they're going in a cave, and look at all these Pokemon. There's a Geodude, Zubat, Clefable, Paris. Now, we don't know the full benefits of having multiplayer on, but you can see here that there's two Pokeballs. There's player one and player two. It's this level 10 Clefairy. There's going to be a more solid way to identify how strong the Pokemon is. I don't know if the CP has anything to do with it. If they made it easy to understand and they scaled it, then a level 5 Clefable should have like 30 CP. But you get two chances to capture it. What the hell? The Pokeballs combined? High five. Okay, so if you have a friend, I guess the chances of catching a Pokemon is higher. And you'll see later on that they encounter a legendary Pokemon. So I guess for that, you'd want to freaking trick the Switch, pick up your other Joy-Con, and pretend you've got friends. All right, next section, battling. How's it going to work with battling if you got, like, CP Pokemon? Like, the way it works in Pokemon Go. Well, for one, we know they got levels. But this is really cool right here. The fact that, like, it's actually a multiplayer game. If your friend comes over, you guys can actually choose to play this game. These two are walking through what seems like the Golden Nugget Bridge. And freaking a Bug Catcher wants to battle. Bug Catcher KO. And they got... They double teaming him. We got a Pikachu and a Bulbasaur. You can see battles work the same way. You just pick from your four moves and you attack the opponent. I guess they'd have to balance it. So in a situation like this... I don't know if you'd both be able to just attack the opponent. I think you would have to take turns because then you could just go into multiplayer mode all the time, catch Pokemon easily, double team every single trainer, even freaking Rocket Boss Giovanni. But you guys have to see here the quality, the smoothness, the Colosseum like these graphics are. It's insane. So you just slaughtered it and he's sad now. It's so crazy. They're so smooth. Like, think back to just doing a multi-battle on the 3DS and how much it lags. You can't even imagine how it could lag on the Switch here with freaking solid-ass graphics. All right, next session, control. So, they show us this Pokeball here. So, they don't actually explain this in the trailer, but this thing is called a Pokeball Plus. And it's exactly a Poke Walker. But at the same time, if you connect it to your Switch, you can use it as the controller. Because if you could just use one Joy-Con... Let me freaking get my controller. Okay, I'm not even gonna lie. I was looking for my Switch Joy-Cons. I think I lost one. It freaking turned on? You can hold this crap in one hand. And it's got a back button here, which you could probably use to run. So, because they made the control so simple where you just move with this... And then A, B, everything is here. It freaking did turn on. Then, of course, you could use the Pokeball here, which has a D-pad in the button of the Pokeball. But what's crazy about this is it's actually a Pokewalker as well. And it has nothing to do with Pokemon Go. You just download Pokemon into it and take it for a walk like you used to with the Pokewalker. Freaking, what, like seven years ago with Heart Gold and Soul Silver? But it was nine years ago with Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But... They have more to reveal. We don't know if there's any benefits when you bring a Pokemon into it. But there is a secret that they have at the end of the trailer. There's so much, man. Let's just keep going. So here we have more. This looks like it's the cycling path, but the dude is not on his bike. But you can see Eradicate just there on the road with Psyduck and Pidgey here. It's so interesting to think how they'll make it for rare Pokemon to appear. Like, this is such a new concept. And remember, I'm going to remind you guys. This ain't forever. This is just a one-time thing they're doing for these games. So just enjoy it. The game you guys want, I posted on Twitter. The game you guys want will come in due time. They already confirmed that they're working on another game, which I'll talk about later. Just enjoy this game. There's, of course, things you might not like, but as long as you remember that it's not permanent, none of this stuff is permanent, they're going to go back to the old formula after this. 
Just enjoy the crap out of these games. So yeah, here he's using the Pokeball as controller, and you can also throw it to catch the Pokemon as well. I don't know if there's like a 10% easier catch rate if you do it, but it's already in the freaking Pokeball. This is crazy. It looks like he's in the PC, but he's in the Pokedex right now. It's so weird to see this on the home console. It's all stretched out and smooth. Next up, they show you a bit of information on how it works to take your Pokemon out. So you can see here, she like pushed pause and went to save your game and it gave her three options. You can save your progress, take your Pokemon with you for a walk, or continue back to your adventure. This might mean that when you take a Pokemon out for a walk, you can't play the game. Maybe this means you can take Pikachu and Eevee as well, since they're kind of central. Look, look, the Pikachu's on the girl's shoulder. It's just speculation based off what we see here. It's not confirmed yet, but either it pauses your game when you take a Pokemon for a walk, or it doesn't pause your game and you can continue anyway, but maybe you can only take one Pokemon out at a time. Maybe that option changes if you already have a Pokemon out. But look at this, she actually took her Pikachu. Let's take Pikachu for a stroll. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, it, don't rub it. Okay. All right, next section, connecting with Pokemon Go. So here he's out at the park with a lot of friends and he found a Dratini. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Pokemon have levels in Pokemon Go. I think you judge it based off its CP as well as the IVs it has. But it seems like those things can be converted and sent to your Switch. Here he takes it out and he's gonna transfer the Dratini on a Switch. There's gotta be some serious benefits. Like it gets boosted experience, maybe it's happiness is already raised a bit. There's gotta be a couple things. That's how they're gonna make people wanna use Pokemon Go and catch Pokemon. And it takes them here to the Go Park, which seems like some sort of Pal Park area. Like it, it is, what the hell? This is insane right here, y'all. Look at this. Charizard, Nido Queen, my dude's been duplicating. So this really seems like some sort of Pal Park area. If you guys notice, she transferred the Dratini individually. So it's not like you see all your Pokemon Go uh, Pokemon here, but maybe you can individually transfer like 10 Pokemon here and you can actually see all those Pokemon here So maybe all of these Pokemon are actually from Pokemon Go that he just has transferred here, which is crazy It really is like a pal park here. He has sent a present to Pokemon Go I don't know what that is There's probably gonna be some sort of like mystery gift like things where if you cross over more and more you get presents and secrets The rumors did say that there are rewards for using both. So we'll see how that plays a, a role Look at his long ass phone. So look, he's getting a present, right? This present, they're not going to show us what it is. They're going to tease it again at the end of this trailer. But wait for it. It's something big. Here's the next section, y'all. This is where the crazy reveals are. Look at this crap. Pokeride Pokemon Return. Here's a Lapras in the ocean. You know what's crazy? There is a, a screenshot that surfaced like two months ago with a girl with the Eevee on her head. It turns out that's real, I guess. It looks like actually a screenshot someone took from this exact trailer and just leaked it two months ago. Nothing else. That's the only legit leak that turned out to be real. Nothing else was real aside from that one rumor that built up to this. But there is a freaking Ride Onyx. They actually did change the Poker Ride Pokemon and who knows how Poker Ride works. I said in a previous video that when people just gift you Poker Ride Pokemon, it doesn't have a sort of thrill to it. It doesn't have that sense of accomplishment like you earned it. You could just break through boulders without having achieved anything. Someone gives it to you. Here, it kind of seems like, look, she doesn't have the gear outfit or anything like you do in Alola. It kind of looks like certain Pokemon, when you catch them, can be converted into Ride Pokemon. So let's say Rock types can all use Rock Smash. Fighting types can all use like strength and crap and that's how she's riding the onyx. I don't think anyone would actually give you a ride onyx unless this is like Brock's onyx. But come on, she ain't got the outfit or anything. She's riding an onyx and it's kind of crazy because at that elevation, I think you can avoid trainer battles. Like, let's keep going. Here's Lapras, here's Charizard. You clearly just moved over here. You avoided that trainer. There's a freaking ponytail walking around there. That is so cool. The reason I'm saying that ride Pokemon might be your own Pokemon that you're riding is because, wait for it, right here. How is this possible? Pokemon follow you. Once again, the switch is so freaking insane. It's so smooth and powerful. You cannot do this at all on the 3DS. When they said they pushed the 3DS to the limits, they're being serious. There's only so much you can do on the 3DS and you can feel it. Well, if you put this on the 3DS, it will just start lagging. The freaking Needle King and Needle Queen are following you so smoothly. It's insane. That's the big thing that's returning, guys. Pokemon follow you again. So far, if you guys noticed, we've only seen the first 151 Pokemon, which is a bit fishy, but we'll get to that later. But it seems like all these 151 Pokemon, it might be possible to make some of them into ride Pokemon. Maybe like 20, 30% of them can be used as a ride Pokemon with some sort of purpose. So maybe instead of teaching HM01 cut to your Pokemon to cut down trees, maybe certain Pokemon with claws 
can be ridden as poker ride pokemon and then you can just break through those obstacles there but just look at this dude pokemon following you there's just something so nostalgic about being a little short character here and having your pokemon following you it's like a perfect step up from how they followed you in heart gold and soul silver they couldn't do this on the 3ds and these are actually the walking animations it seems like from look the gengar is floating that is the vo the electrodes rolling around like that that is exactly the walking and running animations that are unused in ultra sun and ultra moon this is what it's for it can't be done on the 3ds they had to save it for the switch here and it's freaking working flawlessly here he's got the pokeball he's gonna transfer his moltres you cheap ass here they show you catching a few more pokemon that's probably the snorlax you wake up here's a haunter that seems like it's in lavender town and then they show you a feature for the versions you pick so depending on whether you pick let's go pikachu or let's go eevee you get to customize and play with that Pokemon. So here you're petting Pikachu. He's literally on your elbow and you're patting him around and then you can customize them. You can give her the little flower, some freaking weird ass. Oh my God, it's Officer Eevee. Look at you. Do you see? Madu, take that shirt off. You're not, you're, wow. That's next level Red's Pikachu. But yeah, Eevee and Pikachu can be customized and that's how they're going to look like in battle. Only those two, which is awesome. I know some of you guys in Gen 7 use that decoration thing where you could take screenshots with your Pokemon. But being able to keep the Pokemon like that was something we really wanted. And you get to do it with the two Pokemon mascots. But then we got the next crap. Freaking the Rocket logo. This like here's like a refined version of how it looked like when you encountered them in Fire and Leaf Green. But look at this. Team Rocket returns. They've got their models they're not full size like an ultra sun and ultra moon but they're chibis this right here is so crazy smooth ass gameplay a chibi size rocket grunt and you can see it's not team rainbow rocket we can also see here that you're look at the dude it's like on heart gold and soul silver like you're not even gonna send it out of a pokeball you're just gonna it's just gonna come out and it's gonna be wearing that look at this look at this i don't know how many times i said this in this video but there's something so freaking nostalgic about the characters being that way I don't hate the Ultra Sun and Moon way. That's what they're going to go back to after this game. But this is crazy. So we're fighting Team Rocket over here, taking out the dude's Grimer in the Team Rocket base. We still don't know whether these are remakes or sequels. But, you know, there's some stupid rumors saying that this pl takes place like 100 years later in an underwater Kanto because it got all freaking submerged. It just looks like remakes. So far, just consider them remakes. I don't think y'all should be setting your expectation high enough and calling them sequels. That's not what they're trying to do with this game. Remember, this is just a temporary fun side branch game. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. It'd be a lot of extra effort to make it sequels. But you're going here. You're fighting Team Rocket. Here you're in the SSN. And you're fighting a fisherman here. I can't wait to explore this entire region in freaking Colosseum-like 3D. Freaking Dragonite. Once you get that... Damn, you see those... We completely forgot about Pokemon animations. Y'all, look at that Hyper Beam. Blastoise, you still don't shoot out of your cannons? Come on, bro. This thing's freaking using glare. A freaking cloister, seismic toss, and a magic carp. This golem just exploded. And then comes the next reveal. Y'all know in Kanto what waits for you after you beat the Pokemon League. It's freaking in Cerulean Cave. Mewtwo. Look at this. The freaking gemstones all around you. Mewtwo just waiting in that cave. And there is a cutscene that's beyond just walking up to Mewtwo and pushing A. The dude's powering up. You gotta pose. All of y'all gotta be grateful the dude ain't smiling his entire life. Even when there's an Ultra Beast in front of him. And there's actually a showdown. And you get to fight Mewtwo. The potential just gone through the roof. I don't know if Game Freak knows what they did. This game is so animated and smooth that Sun and Moon kind of look like how Harkled and Soul Silver looked like when Gen 5 came out. Like you're starting to feel like parts of it are outdated already just from looking at this trailer. This Mewtwo, y'all. This is gonna be crazy. That's the trailer, y'all. Pikachu and Eevee gonna come out of the TV. This is kind of symbolic for the little Pokewalker thing. The Pokeball Plus, I think it was called. Look at them. Eevee is now a huge ass Pokemon. It's the rival for Pikachu. Let's go Pikachu, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. That's the freaking, that's the reason for its naming scheme. I'm gonna say it again, this is a side branch. They might even do this again in the future, but for now, just remember, this is a side branch. Just a one-time thing they're gonna do. It's Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee in this traditional format with chibi-like graphics, but it's smooth-ass gameplay. It already knocks Sun and Moon out of the park with how smooth and high quality it is. The only argument against it is that Sun and Moon had those Colosseum-like huge models 
But there's one more thing, y'all. This right here. This is the rest of what they were showing a bit earlier. They cut it off. So the dude just transferred something from his Switch game to his phone. So it says receive the present. When you claim it, you'll meet a special Pokemon. They don't show you what it is. What do you think that is? A Mewtwo? Some Notch there? Pikachu? Maybe you can take your custom Pikachu and Eevee out with you? It's none of those. It's not in the trailer, but Pokemon already confirmed what it is. The way they told us is a hell of a tease, but they told us. The Pokemon that's cut off here is a brand new Pokemon nobody has ever seen. Pokemon even tweeted themselves. Here's the tweet. Nobody knows what it is. Y'all already got fans going crazy saying it's Gorochu. Have y'all heard of Gorochu? It's supposed to be the third evolution to Pikachu that never made it. That got scrapped because Raichu's already enough. It can't be Gorochu. If anything, it might be a special evolution you gain by using Pokemon Go. Like how you use the new feature in X and Y to boost Eevee's affection to make it Sylveon. Maybe they're trying to introduce a new evolution using Pokemon Go. Maybe it's something related to the lore. Maybe it's something else, but there's some sort of brand new Pokemon that's supposed to be revealed. And that's the trailer, y'all. That is a hell of a reveal. That is, it's insane to think they're working on this all this time. And they gave us Ultra Sun and Moon just to stall another year. And then, available November 16, 2018, y'all. Pokeball Plus, they say the name here. It's coming out this year. It's already June. Well, tomorrow it's June. It's May 30th right now, right? In five months, the games come out. Everyone already prepared themselves for a 2019 release. They surprised us. They're freaking blowing us out of the park when X and Y was announced, when Sun and Moon was announced. It was in the beginning of the year, in January and February, and we had to wait till the very end of the year. Y'all would be in school, and knowing that you have to go through exams, summer vacation, and start the next school year, and then the games will come out. But dude, summer's already started. All you gotta worry about is going back to school before the games come out. This is crazy, y'all. And then they show us the freaking cover arts. Show me. Insane. This is what you're gonna see on the freaking GameStop EV game shelf. Walmart. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. You pick your version. They did a good job, y'all. This is insane. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Let me know what you like. But tell me what you dislike. Like, let me know stuff that are on your mind that you don't agree with what Pokemon did. Because I want to know what you guys think. Because here, I posted a poll on Twitter about whether you guys were actually excited about this announcement. And this is what you guys said. I asked you guys for your thoughts on Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. 1,500 of you guys voted. 30% of you guys said 10 out of 10. I love this and can't wait for it to come out in 5 months. 70% of people said, I love this 10 out of 10 and I'm so ready for this. But there was a whopping one-third of y'all that said, meh, not what I wanted. I made it a harsh category, wanting to see how many people would pick it. And there seems to be a lot of people who aren't happy with the announcement. So I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do y'all actually feel about this game? But before I end it, because I'm making these update videos hella long. And I'm also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the title... It's gonna be a simple ass title. We're not clickbaiting crap. We're not saying brand new trailer, new Poco Ride, Pokemon Falling You Return, all this crap in the title. It's just gonna be a simple title, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, update, and then the date. And I'm gonna have as much information as I can, all the screenshots and crap in it. We're just gonna go for an organized, fun, non-misleading, and clickbaiting format. And even if it gets less views, who cares? This is how it's fun for the, for the community. But y'all, before I end y'all off, all right? I mean, before I say this, y'all should just let me know your thoughts on the game. Because this might disrupt some of your thoughts. Look at this tweet. I post this an hour ago from when I'm recording this. For y'all who wanted more from the announcement, they already confirmed Generation 8 for 2019. Look at this. With Pokemon Quest, which is a spin-off they announced, and Pokemon Let's Go, there's so many new ways to explore the world of Pokemon. Trainers can look forward to even more with an all-new core series RPG Pokemon title in development for the second half of 2019. This is what I'm talking about. This is the real game they're working on, and it's coming out in 2019. So, enjoy the crap out of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, because the game you want will come with time. Whatever it is, Gen 8, Sinnoh Remix, whatever it is, save that for 2019. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee is just this one-time traditional thing that they're going to have us have fun with until 2019 where they're going to go back to how things were with Sun and Moon, where things are going to be back to normal. So for now, let us just enjoy this traditional game that they're going to give us. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially when you consider the last thing they showed, which was some sort of new Pokemon. 
So be sure to smack the like button if you guys are hyped for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. If you enjoyed this video, hopefully it was informative. Click the link below and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Sometimes I post their stuff as well, but the big scoops are in these videos. But as always, y'all, that's it. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.